What's up everyone and welcome back to Top 5 Central. Today we'll be taking a look at the top 5 craziest Hillary Clinton scandals. Now don't forget, if you want to enter this week's giveaway, all you have to do is simply be subscribed to our channel. As well, make sure you leave a comment letting us know you want to be entered in. It's super easy, fast, and 100% free, so why not do it? Also, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I see a ton of biased media coverage on this election, so I want to be clear and say that I could honestly care less if Donald or Hillary wins. I just thought that this was super interesting, and maybe you might too. Now if we can get 5,000 likes on this video, I'll try to post a few more videos about the election, but with that said, let's get right into it. Number 5. Paula Jones Paula Jones was a worker for the government in Arkansas at the time Bill Clinton worked there as a governor. In 1994, she filed a lawsuit for almost a million dollars in damages based on the fact that apparently Bill Clinton sexually harassed her. The case was settled out of court where the Clintons actually paid her $850,000 to be quiet. But in 2015, Paula Jones actually revealed to reporters that she thought Hillary Clinton was aware of the sexual harassment and did nothing about it. Instead, she actually chose to cover it all up for her husband, Bill. According to Paula, Bill Clinton straight up asked her to give him a blowjob, which isn't exactly appropriate conduct for the workplace. Jones went on to say this year that she fears for her life if Hillary Clinton is elected. And, um, so I started talking to him again about something I think that his wife had been doing or something, just to try to give him an idea that this is, you're not supposed to be doing this here, you know? And um, he sat down really fast and he dropped his pants and he was fondling himself and he asked me to kiss it. Now that is disgusting. And I said, I am not that kind of girl. And I said, I need to be getting back to the front desk. And he said, well, if you have any trouble, to ha have your boss call me immediately. So he was, you could tell. Number four, Norman Chu. In 2008, another year when Hillary ran for office, one of the main contributors and fundraisers for the Democratic Party was Norman Chu. He was someone who collected contributions for the party and helped to promote Hillary. However, in that same year, Shu went to jail for three years for committing fraud way back in 1989. Now, it's important to mention that Hillary Clinton did try to distance herself and her campaign from Norman Shu when his status as a longtime fugitive was revealed, and she declined a donation of more than $850,000 from the guy. However, the Clinton campaign has also ignored private warnings about Norman, and in 2006, Bill Clinton had referred to him as our friend Norman a problem in his past and money that has now been turned away. That story tonight from our senior investigative correspondent, Lisa Myers. He is one of Hillary Clinton's biggest fundraisers, Norman Shu, a wealthy New York businessman who's given a quarter of a million dollars to a who's who of Democratic candidates in the last three years. But Shu is also a fugitive, wanted in California in connection with a 1991 fraud case. The Clinton campaign initially defended Shu, listed on her campaign honor roll, as a man of integrity. Today, the senator said she's giving his $23,000 in donations to charity. When you have it. Number three, sniper fire. Back in 1996, Hillary Clinton took a trip to Bosnia. And according to her reports from 2008, when she landed, she was under fire from snipers and she had been told to run to cover it in the nearby army base. Well, in this case, she was sort of caught lying. CBS had actually accompanied Hillary on her trip and they have footage of Hillary landing in Bosnia and being greeted by a welcoming committee. There was a literal video of her stopping and posing for photos with those that had come to greet her. When you see the video, you know that she wasn't under any sort of sniper fire or anything like that. Now Hillary Clinton took the comments back one week after making them, claiming she had quote unquote made a mistake. I don't know though, it seems like a pretty big mistake to have made. It's super funny though, because there's literal footage of her shaking hands with like soldiers and everything being super calm. So I just thought it was hilarious that she really did get caught in that lie. The brutal war was over, but hostilities continued. And though the trip was exactly 12 years ago tomorrow, the memory seemed etched in Clinton's mind. There was supposed to be some kind of a greeting ceremony at the airport, but instead we just ran with our heads down to get into the vehicles uh, to get to our base. Problem is, that's not what happened. And we should know, CBS News accompanied the First Lady and daughter Chelsea on that Bosnia trip. That's Senator Clinton talking to me on the military flight into Tuzla. And these are the pictures we recorded of the greeting ceremony when the plane landed. Compare that to Senator Clinton's account. I remember landing under sniper fire. Number two, the White House theft. When the Bushes moved into the White House, allegations of damage, theft, and vandalism, and a lot of pranks were made against the Clintons. 
It turned out that when the Clintons moved out of the White House to their home in New York, they actually took items from the White House which they shouldn't have. And the value of all the items that they took was about $136,000. Now eventually the Clintons returned the items, but that doesn't really take away the fact that the items had literally been stolen from the White House. All in all, the Clintons returned around $136,000 of furniture, and they originally claimed that they were all gifts. So to go a little bit more in depth, they didn't really steal it, but they were given these as gifts from people, but if you're elected in office, you can only accept gifts that are worth under a certain amount of money. And if it's over that threshold, it basically belongs to the United States of America, and for some reasons, the Clintons just didn't know that. So technically, yes, they actually stole a ton of stuff from the White House and had to return it when they got caught. Number one, the email scandal. So the email scandal is probably the most recent Clinton scandal there is, and it may act as the deciding factor for whether some people will vote for her or not. Back in 2009, when she became Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton set up like an email server at her home, and she basically relied on it for her work and personal life. The email address and server wasn't approved by the State Department General Inspector as it didn't comply with government rules. Nevertheless, she and her aides still used it. It turned out that Clinton had been using the email to send top secret files, and those emails could have been tracked and read by hacker groups. A couple of days ago, the investigation into the email scandal was reopened, and they're pretty much trying to determine whether her or her aide had violated government policy in the way they handled classified information. Now, it really doesn't help the fact that the email server was actually hacked and so much information was revealed to the public. I'm not gonna go into specifics on what was released or anything like that, but this is definitely the biggest scandal yet. Time you have cited that figure today? It is. And I have not heard anyone other than you ever cite that figure. Wh who told you that 90 to 95 percent of your emails were on the state, were in the State Department system? Who told you that? We learned that from the State Department and their analysis of, uh, the, of the emails that were already on the system. We were trying to help them close some gaps that they had. Can you provide already, me? Can you provide have. me with a name? Because when I asked the State Department about 10 days ago, what's the source of that figure? They shrugged their shoulders. Well, you can look for the state.gov ad and uh, they certainly pop up. And right, and where... the Inspector General report, Madam Secretary, the Inspector General report, which you can't argue by perfect analogy. And there's our list of the top five craziest Hillary Clinton scandals. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to drop a like down below and subscribe so you can stay notified whenever we upload a video. Also, if you have your own top five or top 10 idea, feel free to use your extremely handy form in the description to submit it. With that said, thank you all for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next video.